Section 31 of Christmas and Christmas Lore. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Christmas and Christmas Lore by Thomas G. Crippen. The Yule Log. A seasonable Christmas in England is a cold one, and our ancestors were much of the opinion of Charles Lamb that of all the enjoyments of the season the most indispensable is a large heaped up all attractive fire our familiar grates for economizing coal are quite a modern invention the old english christmas fire blazed upon a wide open hearth as it still does where wood or peat is the fuel most in vogue in preparation for the festival a huge log was selected beforehand as large as the fire dogs would conveniently sustain in some places it was the whole trunk of a tree which had been selected at candlemas in scotland it was commonly a piece of a birch tree stripped of its bark and dried beforehand whence the proverb used for one who was extremely poor he's as bare as a burk on yule eve the yule log was sometimes brought home with considerable ceremony drawn with ropes by many willing hands it being thought or at least said that all who helped were thereby insured against witchcraft for the coming year herrick sings come bring with a noise my merry merry boys the christmas log to the firing while my good dame she bid you all be free and drink to your hearts desiring with the last year's brand light the new block and for good success in his spending on your psalteries play that sweet luck may come while the log is attending in provence the whole family go out on christmas eve to bring in the log which should be cut from a fruit tree the bearers walk in line the eldest foremost and the rest in order of seniority a carol is sung praying for fertility in field and fold house and vineyard the youngest child pours wine on the log in the name of the trinity and it is then thrown on the fire in france it was sometimes four feet long it was always kindled at one end and replaced on the hearth every evening until consumed or till twelfth night if any of it still remained it was carefully preserved as a charm against lightning and against chilblains during the winter in normandy before the revolution it was usual to extinguish the household fire and kindle the log with a flame procured from a lamp in the nearest church sometimes when the log was duly placed and before it was kindled the prettiest girl in the company was seated on it and her health drunk by all present in other places the children were warned not to sit on the log lest they should catch the itch another strange custom was to chalk a rude figure of a man on the log before it was ceremoniously lighted one would think this must have been a dim reminiscence of human sacrifice in heathen times in many places the presents for the children were arranged on the yule log almost everywhere the custom was that a remnant of the log should be reserved to kindle the new log next christmas sometimes the remnant was kindled afresh on candlemas eve and after blazing a while was quenched and preserved as a charm against fire and other misfortunes akin to this was a custom in the netherlands of kindling a splinter of fir wood quenching it when half burned and placing it under the bed as a charm against lightning in brittany it is still usual to light the log always with the brand rescued from last year at the moment when midnight sounds from the church tower the very widespread practice of kindling the new log with a remnant of the old seems like the survival of an ancient celtic notion of a perpetual sacred fire of which we have more definite illustrations in ireland a very common superstition is that unless the maids wash their hands before touching the log the fire will burn dull in some parts of yorkshire it was thought that a squinting or barefooted person would bring ill luck if he came in while the log was burning many northern and western customs appear to favor the view that the yule log is a survival from the norsemen among whom it is said the yule fire burned in honor of thor and was maintained with logs of his tree the oak the yule log is an important matter in dalmatia croatia and serbia 
not christmas eve but christmas morning is the time of its cremation the tree or several young trees are felled before sunrise with some ceremony corn being thrown on them with the words good morning christmas as they are carried in lighted candles are held on each side of the door and as the house father enters with the first log corn or wine is thrown on him by one of the family sometimes the girls adorn the log with leaves and flowers or with red silk and gilt wire sometimes corn and wine are poured on it and a plowshare and an orange set upon it that the corn may grow well and the beasts be healthy it is arranged beforehand who not of the family shall first enter the house he comes early in the morning and shakes corn out of his glove on the threshold saying christ is born one of the family sprinkles corn upon him saying he is born indeed these phrases it scarcely needs to be said are the regular christmas salutation and response the visitor then beats the log to make the sparks fly and utters a wish for good luck to the household and their farm possibly in its origin this ceremonial may have been a solemn rekindling of the sacred hearth fire the center of the family life and dwelling place of the ancestors it certainly seems somewhat heathenish it must always be remembered that the yule log with all its archaic and sentimental associations belongs exclusively to the open hearth the modern apology a billet the size of a quarter in loaf set on the top of a coal fire in a modern grate is about as much like the genuine yule log as a horse chestnut is like a chestnut horse still at ripon and probably elsewhere coopers were wont to dispose of useless knotty blocks by giving them to customers to serve as yule logs if anything of these was left it was consumed on old christmas eve brand writing in seventeen seventy seven tells us that in the north of england a very large block of coal was often set apart as a substitute for the yule log in devonshire and somerset cottages an ashen faggot takes the place of the yule log the origin of this was accounted for by a pretty legend when the shepherds came through the snow to bethlehem they found the holy family suffering from the cold so the youngest of the shepherds went out and gathered a bundle of ash sticks wherewith to kindle a fire ash being it is said the only wood that will burn freely while green another explanation of the custom relates it to a vague story of king alfred during his sojourn at athelney but considering that the ash was held sacred by the danes and norsemen who were still heathen when the saxons of somerset were at least nominally christian we are disposed to associate the ashen faggot with the mythic ash yggdrasil of the eddas by which the world was sustained the roots of which went down to hell while its branches soared to heaven to burn the sacred ash on christmas eve might well be a symbolic repudiation of heathenism as with the yule log so with the ashen faggot a remnant should always be reserved to kindle the fire in the following year in some places the ashen faggot was associated with a custom which is now we may hope generally obsolete the faggot of huge size and having nine bands was kindled on the wide hearth of a farmhouse or public house kitchen the men sat around and as each band of the faggot gave way a fresh quart of cider was brought in if any one retired being overcome by the heat he was expected to pay for another quart of cider by way of penalty in short like many other old drinking customs it was a competition who could imbibe the greatest quantity of liquor without being helplessly intoxicated a less objectionable custom was to associate each of the nine bands with the names of a pair of lovers the jest was that they whose band was first burnt through would first be married if by any chance the christmas fire should go out that would be very unlucky especially when lucifer matches were unknown and tinder boxes rather a rarity for in many places particularly in the north of england nobody would oblige another with a kindling at yule it was deemed unlucky that any light should leave the house from christmas eve till new year's day the fire therefore was kept constantly burning and on this account at cleobury mortimer salop of the curfew bell 
was not rung during the christmas season in some places a bonfire was made in some open space and kept burning from christmas eve till the new year so as to be available in case of emergency in other places on the contrary the custom was not to light a fire on christmas day except with fire borrowed from a neighbor's house this seems related to the notion of a perpetual sacred fire the ashes of the christmas log were supposed to give fertility to the ground to rid cattle of vermin to cure toothache and to protect the house from fire and ill luck but to throw them out on christmas day would be nothing short of criminal it would be throwing ashes in the saviour's face end of section thirty one